This is iFiber One News. Here are today's top stories. George Turner has a task on his hands, turning around a $30 million blockchain project that's losing money. About 11,000 people in Chelan and Douglas counties suffer from food insecurity. Families are invited to the annual Fall Fest returning Saturday, October 6th at Afreda's Cloudview Farm. The Moses Lake Chiefs girls soccer team beat the visiting Davis Pirates last night to stay tight for first in the conference. From the iFiber One newsroom, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. George Turner has a task on his hands, turning around a $30 million blockchain project that's losing money, laid off staff, lost its CEO, owes money to contractors, and faces a federal class action lawsuit. Gigawatt Incorporated, a massive host service for cryptocurrency miners, announced this week it had laid off 47 of its 63 staffers, facing liens from contractors amounting to more than $625,000. The collapse came after founder and CEO Dave Carlson spent years as Gigawatt's public face promoting the promise of blockchain, the distributed computing system that makes cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin possible. But as trouble loomed, Carlson departed in mid-August, so quietly that even employees weren't aware of his decision for weeks. Turner was named managing director. Gigawatt took on really the equivalent of one of Hercules' own trials. Namely, the construction of a privately owned substation that would have powered 22 buildings of high-capacity processing equipment, more than 30 megawatts of electricity. The substation had to be redesigned multiple times to meet standards, and that put Gigawatt behind its ambitious construction and financial targets. Layoffs became the best option. Some staff asked to stay on voluntarily. Because they believe in the vision. Um... Where do you find people like that? Gigawatt set itself up as a host service for crypto miners, selling equipment and computing power to help them harvest value from Bitcoin and other blockchain assets. Its financing was tied up in crypto-based tokens, or shares, that it sold in a sale called an initial coin offering. The token's value was based on hitting construction benchmarks, which have now passed unmet. Gigawatt settled a lawsuit from one token holder, but now faces a class action suit that could represent thousands of them. Was the ICO... Was it something you needed to do? Was it a good idea? Was it a mistake? And, and the answer was, yeah, I think it was all of those things in some ways. We needed the funding. We wanted our clients and investors to be involved in the project, and we saw that as a way to make that happen. Gigawatt now hopes to retool, becoming a more traditional server farm, renting processor bandwidth for AI, CGI rendering, and other applications. Cryptocurrency remains in the mix, though. In fact, some of Gigawatt's processors are now hashing Bitcoin to help pay its debts. We're fighting for this company. We're fighting for our clients. We're fighting to satisfy the debts we owe to our creditors. Um, we're fighting really for our own future and, and for the future of the employees we had to lay off, most of whom had gotten to be like family to us. Jefferson Robbins, iFiber One News. This segment is brought to you by... Change doesn't have to be complicated. With a low-profile microwave hood combination that's ready to install right out of the box. It fits in the same space as your under cabinet hood, so you can get your microwave off the countertop and make space for the routines worth keeping. The low profile microwave hood combination from the number one selling appliance brand in the USA. Whirlpool Appliances, now available at More Furniture in Afreda. The need is real. About 11,000 people in Chelan and Douglas counties suffer from food insecurity. The response is real, too. The anti-hunger program Second Harvest, with local partner agencies, distributed roughly 76,000 pounds of food in the two counties last year through its mobile market program. September is Hunger Action Month, and Second Harvest is on track for similar numbers. The agency trucks food to distribution sites where local volunteers help out. A Friday distribution at Holy Apostles Catholic Church in East Wenatchee passed out food to about 250 households in need. Every uh, truck is different, but today they've got soup, potatoes, uh, apples, different kinds of crackers, several different varieties of breads, watermelon, onion. Sometimes they have fresh corn on the cob or beans, uh, sometimes occasionally meat. So it's a variety and it's all fresh. Most of it uh, donated by uh, local produce companies. Rotary groups from throughout the valley joined up for the effort, the fourth local distribution this year. We have the food bank down at the Community Action Council. Um, we've got food banks and distribution centers at other places, and so I think there's a need. Talking to uh, one of our Rotarians, he said there are about 650 families that are looking for housing. And I imagine if there are that many looking for housing, there's that many and more that are in need of food. 
Another distribution is planned for October 11th. Jefferson Robbins, iFiber One News. This segment is brought to you by... Your taste buds bored? Well, then bring them to Jay's Teriyaki. Not only does Jay's have a variety of teriyaki dishes, they also offer mouth-watering salads and sides. Call Jay's, 509-764-5155. Jay's Teriyaki, located at 123 East Broadway in Moses Lake, because it's all in the sauce. Families are invited to the annual Fall Fest, returning Saturday, October 6th, at Afreda's Cloudview Farm. The event runs from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the farm located at 17305 Frey Road in Afreda. Admission is free for all ages, and the festival includes live music, kids' activities, cider pressing, a pumpkin patch, hay rides, and more. Cloudview Farm began putting on the festival several years ago, held on the first Saturday in October, as a way of giving back and reaching out to the community, as well as encouraging people to visit the farm and sample some of the food they grow. Cloudview was founded in 2006 with the farm in Efreda added in the spring of 2012. For more information on the festival and the farm, visit cloudviewfarm.org. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. The Moses Lake Chiefs girls soccer team beat the visiting Davis Pirates last night to stay tied for first in the conference. The 3-0 victory for the Chiefs over the Pirates puts Moses Lake at a 4-1 conference record, which keeps the Chiefs in a three-way tie for first place with Wenatchee and Eastmont. The Chiefs got ahead early, scoring two goals in the first half to take a definitive lead. Davis played tough and physical, but it didn't take very long in the second half for the Chiefs to add another goal. The Pirates had some opportunities to score in the second half, but none of them landed, and the Chiefs notched their fourth consecutive shutout. After the game, senior Morgan Scone talked about her team's winning streak. To us it's very important because one of our season goals was to make it to the first round of state and hopefully continuing to keep winning and winning. Next up for the Chiefs is an important game against Eastmont on the road. Both teams are tied for first place, so the game will surely be an intense one. I'm Am Chikoski for iFiber One Sports. This is iFiber One News. For more information on these stories and other news, visit us online at iFiberOne.com or check us out on Facebook.